let me uh, share the profile of Dr. Dharam Bhavuk, uh, who I have already introduced in the previous session. Uh, he is a professor of management and culture and community psychology at uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa, USA. Professor Bhavuk, over to you. Namaste. Uh, I'm going to talk fast. And I'm going to try to add a few things that I did not say last time when I've changed the title to simply Indian Indigenous Indian Management Way Forward. I'll skip the abstract and I will. This is what I shared last time also, probably in not these many words. Uh, I do feel that we need to stop criticizing Western man knowledge system, Western management. We need to deliver indigenous constructs, models and theories in Indian knowledge system. And we need to employ a suitable methodology instead of keep complaining about uh, the, uh, the tragedy of experimental method. It's not going to go away. And we can actually use the experimental method also for Indian ideas. So, but we should add more methods. So that's my recommendation. Uh, I think today we have kind of gone back and wondered about Indian knowledge system. Uh, in this social science, Indian philosophy is established. Indian economics is not established, but probably can be established because there is, there is a document or two that you know, people can refer to. Indian psychology is in the making, uh, but the whole idea of Indian psychology probably is, uh, you know, it does not fit because we never had a Shastra called psychology. Uh, for that matter, actually, we didn't even have philosophy. Uh, we had the Vedas and the Vedangas. Uh, at least in three sources, I have not find a reference to the Shad Darshan. So I believe that we are we invented this to please our colonizers, but that's a different topic. Uh, Indian sociology, political science, and then will come the multidisciplinary field of management. Unless we, if we are weak in the basic subjects, we'll be weak in management. Let's face that. If there is no psychology, there is going to be no organizational behavior. We'll keep going back to Western models and theories. Uh, probably there will be Indian jurisprudence. I think in the STEM area, Indian health science is pretty established with Ayurveda, both in theory and practice. Uh, yoga is pretty established in uh, health sciences. Uh, Dhyan is pretty established in health sciences. So I think there is Indian knowledge system that has, uh, uh, you know, that has, that does not need you and me. It is already established. Uh, Indian astronomy may need our help. Indian mathematics may need. Indian chemistry. Uh, thank you, uh, um, Ashish ji, for reminding us of the uh, Hindu chemistry. Uh, but you know, there's there's stuff there, and we can we need to build on it. In psychology, and probably in all of social science, we talk about self, and we have an Indian concept of self. Uh, when we look at Western concept of self, it is primarily sociological. But the Indian concept of self can extend that literature by bringing the other concepts that we use in the concept of self. So, uh, you know, we have the concept of Atman, Buddhi, Manas. Uh, we never neglect the senses. We actually divide them into Jnanendriya and Karmendriya. Uh, most of psychology kind of, you know, uh, leaves the body and and that's why the mind body divide is is an issue uh, and we we actually accept the physical self and we can see that in yoga and pranayam and dhyana and then we can also add the social self so we if we start with the indian concept of self we will enrich the western concept of self so this is an example of a construct that we can share with the world but also use in our own in our own world, why is it stuck now? Okay, I did want to share a model that has helped me over the years understand what is happening and why indigenous ideas are neglected. So if you focus on the center block, uh, we are always dealing with human issues. For human issues, we have cultural insights for solving human issues. Remember, all human issues are shaped by the ecology and culture and history. So in the desert culture, you have desert related problem. In an, on an island, you have surrounded by water problems. 
So cultural insights lead to solutions. So the last block is basically where problem solution, theory building, and model testing, which leads to indigenous knowledge system. So that I, IKS there is for indigenous knowledge system. In cross-cultural research, we also call that emic or culture specific knowledge system. Now, what has happened where colonization kicks in is the moment there is a human issue, we run to the block on the top, existing Western theories, Western data, existing cross-cultural theories, cross-cultural data, and we impose that on the human issue and we try to solve the problem. That basically leads to solutions that disregard cultural insight. There is total disregard for cultural insight. And that is what then leads to basically uh, creating Western knowledge system constantly being pushed. Let's take a uh, quick example of microfinance that Professor Yunus started in Bangladesh. Starting in the early 80s, by 2005-06, he received the Nobel Prize because he has reached one third of Bangladesh population. He has been able to help. What was the fundamental contribution? He's a Western trained economist. He was frustrated with teaching economics in Bangladesh. He said, I'm not helping anybody. This knowledge is not helping anybody. So he started with his own $400 and gave money to people who had no collateral and sent his students to chase them every week to collect a part of that loan. This system took some time to develop, but basically the contribution, I think he deserves a Nobel Prize in economics. The theoretical contribution is that those who have nothing to give offer in collateral are not dishonest. They can be trusted with loan, maybe a small loan for something they can do. But Grameen Bank has 99% return rate. They have only less than 1% default rate. If you remember 2008, all international banks suffered with default rate from the wealthiest people. So poor people are not dishonest. Poverty does not lead to crime. Amartya Senji has argued in one of his papers with data from Kolkata. So when human issues are looked from indigenous ideas, creating an indigenous approach, then we get something like a Grameen Bank. Then we get something like Amul. Amul is founded on Indian cultural solution to the problem of the farmers who were selling milk to the multinational. So it is possible to create Indian knowledge system, indigenous knowledge system. So that's basically what I'm saying here in this diagram. And theoretically, then we can also develop universal theories if we follow this central path and develop Indian knowledge system. If we keep looking West for our solutions, we will keep using Western theories and models, and that's that's the colonization we are talking about today. It is not subtle. It is institu institutionalized. Ashish just, uh, just mentioned it about where we publish, what we publish. If our life is guided by those issues, then we'll never get out of this colonial trap. So sticking to my recommendation, so this is what, so we need to develop Indian constructs. So Indian concept of self, I already shared this with you. And India has a lot of concept and I have been able to work on a few Lajja, Adhyatma, Lok Sangraha, which is for leadership. If you start with Western leadership literature and ideas, you will never come to Lok Sangraha. Never. And therefore, you will never get understand leadership in Indian context. You, you will continue to study, you know, whatever you want to, but that will be just an imposition. Uh, also, if we keep translating our constructs, then Shraddha is equal to faith. No, it's not. Shraddha is a rich construct. It requires a lot of reflection. And, you know, it took me 30 pages to kind of describe what Shraddha is. Uh, even love or prem. Uh, so I studied Kabir Das's Dohas. And Kabir Das is, you know, 
uh, not talking about love the same way that everybody else is talking about love. And so this is where we have the so Indian culture is blessed. We have old texts, we have you know not so old texts, and we have medieval texts, and we have current texts. We can go to those texts and they represent our culture and we can develop ideas. Uh, similarly, uh, I have written a paper on tapas, and you know, everybody loves emotional intelligence, but tapas makes more sense in the Indian context. Uh, recently, I also wrote a paper uh, and I called it Sadhu Marg, and this is uh, uh, on the biography of Pramukh Swamiji Maharaj. And again, if I start with leadership model, I will not come to Sadhu Marg. I have to start from indigenous material, only then I will get a leadership model. And, you know, look around, we have so many sadhus who are leaders. You can call them social entrepreneurs, but that's such an insulting thing to say. They are sadhus. What is wrong in calling them who they are? Why do we have to redefine them in, as social entrepreneur? Uh, over the years, I have, you know, so uh, working on the concept of self, uh, there is an Indian theory of self. Uh, I've written a paper on uh, theory of Krodha, which uh, basically enriches the Western literature on aggression and the methods of controlling aggression. But the Western literature is atheoretical. With 50 years of research on aggression, it is still atheoretical compared to the theory of growth that we have in our own culture. And of course, theory of karma, everybody knows, and it's rich, and it has actually implications in the workplace. So uh, the work is out there. I'm going to stop here. I think I'm going to sh uh, show you glimpses of so uh, just like. Abhayaji and Mahadevanji, I'm a trained engineer, so I only think in diagrams. So Adhyatma, this is from the Bhagavad Gita. So, you know, there is Brahma, there is Adhyatma, there is Adhidaiva, there is Karma, there is Adhiyagya, there is Adhibhuta. How are they related? Bhagavad Gita 8.123 kind of gives us a picture. Uh, so, you know, but if we run to spirituality, we will never get to Adhyatma. Adhyatma is a rich construct. Uh, tapas similarly, so just to show you some diagrams. So tapas can be looked from Satvik Rajasik Tamasik perspective, and then you know we'll see Shraddha is related to tapas. Tapas can be looked looked from Sharirik, uh, Vak, and uh, Manas perspective. And you know, in in our worldview, we look at all cultivation at three levels. It's not only at the mental level, not at the Manas level only. We are conscious of speech and we are conscious of the physical. And going to quickly to the methodology, just one slide. We can develop indigenous methodology. We can start with the text and we have so many texts. So I've been using the Bhagavad Gita and Durga Sapshati, uh, but you know, Ramayana of Tulsidas Ji or Valmiki, Guru Granth Sahib, uh, Sukhmani Sahib. I'm working on a paper on Sukhmani Sahib. Uh, the Holy Quran, one of my students is working on a leader, Islamic leadership model, uh, analyzing the uh, uses of constructs in literature. So I have used Kamayani. And again, we can see that uh, we have the text that we can count on and it provides us examples. We can analyze proverbs, we can analyze daily communications. I can stop there. We have the methodology, we have the constructs, we need to do more. We don't need to complain about Western knowledge system. They are good in their place. We need to basically carve out our own space. I think that's what we need to do. You still have one more minute if you like, but... Uh, no, no, it's good. I think I, I, I said I'll talk fast today. And this is exactly what I want to share. And this is what I will pre basically present in the paper also uh, about what where we are, why we keep developing non-indigenous knowledge systems. Uh, in that one minute, I can. Uh, I would like to say that you know all the cases written by Indian scholars or other scholars on Indian businesses, they are all a rich source for developing Indian management. So if you know somebody is interested in working with me. Uh, 
it is i have tried to connect with some people and you know the either it's too much work or they don't want to i don't know what the reason is but if we were to just look at all the indian cases we will decipher indian management practices even though they are written by using western ideas okay thank you so much and namaste professor bhavuk